Hello, this is Angela with Parkrose Permaculture. Welcome to my Friday Parkrose House Frau video. Now, these videos are new on this channel. I have for the last 10 or 11 months been making uh, videos focused on domesticity and homemaking on a tiny little sister channel called Parker's House Frau. I have decided to merge those videos with this channel and have a regular Friday upload in which I talk about domestic and homemaking subjects. Now you may be wondering like why are homemaking things relevant on a permaculture channel? Well, Permaculture is a design system for not only sustainable, but regenerative living. It's not just about gardening. And it really intermeshes very, very well with all kinds of other philosophies, including homemaking, which is um, a vocation that is not tied to an external job and an external paycheck, but is focused on cultivating sustainability and contentment around the domestic sphere and within our local communities. Today's video is going to be on why we as a family are unschoolers. And you're going to say again, like Angela, how is this permaculture? So in permaculture, we talk quite a bit about site specific design. There is no one size fits all approach. The permaculture design for my garden here in Portland, Oregon is not going to work in Tucson, Arizona. It's not going to work in, you know, um, San Ignacio, Belize. It's not going to work at every location. There is no one size fits all approach. We want to look at the circumstances of our landscape. We want to look at the conditions that already exist there. What is bountiful? What is lacking? What are the needs? And how can we meet those specific needs tailored to the individual? Much like a homemaker looks at having the needs of a household and of a local community met and addresses those needs with a specific approach that works for that location. Very much like my permaculture garden has a design that I created just for my garden. Same is true of our educational philosophy. There is not a one size fits all approach to education that works for every child because humans are unique individuals. My husband is a public school special education teacher. I have kind of what my college uh, considered the equivalent of a minor, a uh, concentration in elementary education. We are really big proponents and believe in public education. But that doesn't mean that it is the right choice for everybody. And it also doesn't mean that unschooling is the right choice for everybody. So I've gotten lots and lots of requests on my Parker's Housefrau channel, which again, now merged with this channel. And on this channel, when I've talked about the fact that we're unschoolers, folks have asked me to talk about that. So I briefly want to talk about why we're unschoolers, what unschooling is to us, and how it fits into a truly tailor-made, um, individual-specific way of thinking about life and how it really ties in to an integrated, holistic view of how we live as people. So there's tons out there on the internet if you want to research what is the philosophy of unschooling. Unschooling is not necessarily child-led education, child-led learning. It's not uh, neglecting your kids and letting them play video games all day long and eat a bag of Doritos while you uh, go about your business doing your own thing. Unschooling is not um, anti-education. Unschooling is not not educating. Unschooling is a whole life learning philosophy in which everything we do in life, every experience we're exposed to is an opportunity for education. And this is very much like permaculture. Permaculture principle, observe and interact. Like unschooling is basically observing and interacting in everything you do, not just while you're sitting inside a concrete building at a Formica desk, being uh, passively, pa while you're passively absorbing information uh, dictated to you by somebody in front of a chalkboard. The idea of unschooling is that all of your experiences in life are an opportunity to integrate what you're seeing, what you're absorbing with not only who you are as a person, but the way you view the world and integrating those bits of knowledge and experience with each other to form a holistic, fully interconnected view of the world, understanding of systems around you, of subject matter that you normally would learn about in a segregated way in education. 
and it ties the way you learn things instead of being abstract concepts, it ties them into real rooted experiences in your life. We know that when our interests are followed, when we have a desire, like my eldest kid, Ruth, when she was about five, it was ancient Egypt, all ancient Egypt all the time. That girl went down a rabbit hole where all she did was read about ancient Egypt, look at the British Museum's website and craft doing ancient Egyptian art style, learned hieroglyphs. She didn't want to learn about anything else. Everything was going down the rabbit hole of ancient Egypt until she had exhausted the topic and gotten everything out of it that she wanted to. And because that was so meaningful and because she was following her passion where it naturally led, all of that information was really highly retained. It's very much like how folks ask me about how I have such a photographic memory for permaculture, for plant stuff. It's because that's where my passion is leading me. And when something is meaningful to us, when it's meaningful to our lives, when it is following our interests, we retain that information so much better. That information is less easily lost because it is integrated with other aspects of our life. And it's much easier to recall it because there's all these other strings that it's attached to pulling it back to the forefront of our memory. Unschooling is very much that way. So as a parent with unschoolers, um, my job is to create a lifestyle for them in which they have enriching experiences where they are exposed to a diversity of people, a diversity of thought, a diversity of um, interactions with the community, where they have uh, ready access to educational materials. I know that takes a certain amount of privilege. This video is not going to get into an exhaustive list of why unschooling takes a certain amount of privilege, but I want to acknowledge that it does. But for me, having kids who are free to follow their passions wherever they want may mean that my kid is playing Minecraft for six hours a day online with his friends for a couple of weeks until he gets tired of it. My son George, who's now 10, learned how to read playing Minecraft online with his friends. He learned multiplication at age seven by playing Minecraft. He, learns all, he learned all kinds of geometrical subjects, all sorts of geometry, exponents, uh, square roots. He learned all that just holistically by building stuff in Minecraft and talking with his friends and reading the chat with his friends. Those were concepts that I didn't have to formally sit down and say, let's do a worksheet and learn what two times three is. How many apples do we have if we have two baskets with three apples in each basket? No, man, he just learned that through the course of daily life by being provided with experiences that naturally holistically lent themselves to learning multiplication. Now, as a parent, that can be really unsettling, especially also like in our culture where everything is really rigid and you go to school, what you learn in school, you learn in school, you get home and you have like relaxation and fun time. For unschoolers, learning and fun time are fully interwoven together. They aren't separated. Now, that doesn't mean my kids don't go to classes. They choose to go to classes. My second daughter, B, she does um, Model UN mock trial. Her team just won state champions here in Oregon, and they're going to nationals. She takes Supreme Court case history classes. She follows her passions. And if those passions lead her to taking a formal, organized classroom setting um, you know, course, that's totally fine. That's where it's leading her. But that's very different than saying you're going to sit down and for 45 minutes a day, you're going to have a math class. For 45 minutes a day, you're going to have an English class. For 45 minutes a day, you're going to take Spanish. That notion of kind of segregating everything out really reminds me of when you have gardens and everything is long straight rows and it's just plowed up dirt and the dirt needs to be clean and pristine and there can't be any weeds and there can't be any mushrooms in it. And each row gets a separate veggie. That's neat and orderly and that works for some gardeners. That does not work for me. It doesn't work with the way my brain works, the way I understand the integration of all things in nature. It doesn't seem to me to be um, the most productive and the most sustainable and the most um, valuable way for me to garden both in terms of my experience of gardening and the produ productivity of my garden itself. That's sort of how I view individual classrooms in the school setting. For me as an individual in the way my brain works and for my children in the way their brains work because they are, you know, 50% me, 
that kind of like very linear straight line chopped up um, clean pristine garden while very pretty and orderly and some people that may really appeal to them it doesn't work for me that's why I have a big messy permaculture garden and that's why we're unschoolers it works for the way that our brains work the way our passions work for me and for my children it has been a way of learning that feels more authentic, where information is better retained, where we do not segregate out learning experiences from living. They are intrinsically tied together. They're the same thing. And that means everything that we do when we go about life is an opportunity to learn how to function better in the world, how to be a healthier, more whole, per whole person, and how to gain wisdom and knowledge. That can feel really um, difficult for a lot of people, very much like when folks ask me, how do I get rid of aphids in my garden? And my first reply is not spray them with an insecticide. It's why do you wanna get rid of aphids in your garden? We've been so trained to want to have this very binary dichotomous way of thinking and where things are really separated out. And so of course, like going to public school is the sort of natural routine we have had in this country for about a hundred years. It's not a very long social experiment, educational experiment, but it's long enough that those of us that are adults have it really entrenched in our memory as like the way to do it. Very much so if you have bugs and pests in the garden, the way to do it is to spray them with poison. Instead of saying, what role do those aphids fill in the ecosystem? Well, they're food for all kinds of beneficial creatures. They're a significant food source. What happens if you decide not to treat them with an insecticide? What happens if you decide not to send your kids to school and you decide not to stress about what age they learn to read when they learn to do multiplication? What if you totally ignore the question that we're told we need to answer in the first place and say, what if I look at this in an entirely different way? And that's what unschooling is. It is looking at your education in a way that is very different with the standard model in the United States and much of the world that we've been presented with for the last hundred years. It's not not schooling. It's not wild, feral children doing nothing, although my kids frequently are wild and feral. It is not neglecting their education. It is a different educational philosophy. And it's one that really works, but again, is not for everybody. So I hope that helps answer a little bit about like why we're unschoolers, what unschooling like feels like to us. I'm happy to talk about it more in the future if folks have questions. I can't speak for the experience of every unschooler. Being pro-unschooling does not mean I am anti-public education. It means I want a diversity of systems that work for every unique individual. And for our fa family, for our household, for my individual children, this has been the method that has worked for us. And unschooling for each of my four kids has looked really, really different. So again, my second daughter, she takes lots of formal classes because that's what works for her. My eldest child pretty much would just read books and paint all day. And for my third child, he's very, very social. So it means lots of outings, lots of park days outside where he's moving his body a lot, lots of time online gaming with friends, lots of time playing games as a family because he's a very social person. My youngest child is much more introverted and would rather spend the majority of his time um, working on like engineering kind of things, working on games where he's building things like Minecraft, working on a uh, quiet activities like Legos. So, I think that it's really important if we're looking at permaculture as site-specific design, that kind of philosophy and most of the permaculture principles actually pertain to all kinds of other areas of life, be it who we are in terms of our householding and homemaking or in terms of our educational philosophy. And so for my family, I wanna to strive to have all those things be really interconnected and really highly functional. And that is why we are unschoolers. I hope that you will come back every Friday or most Fridays, I hope, for Parker's Hausfrau videos on this channel where we focus on ecological and sustainable and frugal homemaking subjects because they are really integral to permaculture. If you're not into like the, the main subject of this channel, 
just come check in every Friday and check out my homemaking videos. But perhaps you might also check out those videos because many homemakers are also into gardening and uh, preserving food and many other aspects of permaculture. So again, everything is interconnected. It's really hard to have those kind of separate YouTube channels for me when there's so much overlap because all of these things are interrelated. I'd love to hear your thoughts and questions below. I always read every single comment. I don't have time to answer every single one, but I do read your thoughts and I really appreciate them. I'll be back really soon outdoors in my permaculture garden, sharing all of the wonderful things happening this spring. I hope you will check out some of my older housefrau videos as I start to import them onto this channel. Thanks.